to the Her Business Podcast, where we explore the inner and outer game of business. I'm Susie Daphnis. I'm the CEO at Her Business, and today I'm doing something a little bit different. Now, I'm not sure if you know, I actually have a second podcast show that I co-host with my wonderful friend and marketing expert, Michelle Falzon. Now, that show is called The Content Sales Podcast, and if you haven't tuned in, you definitely want to do that. Now, the reason I mention it is that we recently recorded an episode for that show, and I thought this information is so good. I also want to publish it across this podcast because the topic is that important and that close to my heart, to be honest. Now, as well as co-hosting the Content Sales Podcast, Michelle and I also co-present the Marketing Success Mastermind. This is a year-long program for women who want to get amazing results in their business through leveraging their marketing and marketing strategy. It's a great program, and we meet with our masterminders four times a year for these um, two-day workshops. And so recently, I talked about this topic at our mastermind, and I've also talked about it at our REACH retreat in Hawaii. And every time I talk about it, I encourage women to step into the space that they want to occupy and unapologetically own. Now, our masterminders and our REACHers, as we like to call them, they have fallen in love with this idea of owning more space. It really resonated with them. And as you will hear, I love this topic. And today's episode is all about this way of being, owning more space that is crucial to everything we do as entrepreneurs and marketers. Now, owning more space, as you'll hear, really helps you reach more people. It gives you the confidence to know that there is room for you in the world. There is room for you to shine brightly and fully and unapologetically in whatever space you choose to occupy and own. Now, I want to clarify this idea of owning more space, and we'll talk more about it in just a minute, but it's about expanding into a bigger expression of yourself and your business in all the ways possible. Maybe that means more charging more for your products and services, or maybe it's about becoming more visible in your marketing, or saying yes to bigger opportunities, or getting more audacious in your messaging. There are lots of ways to own more space, and in this episode, Michelle and I are going to share some practical tips on how to do that. So let's now go to the episode. Hey, Michelle, how are you? Hello, fabulous Susie Daphnis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing great. Thank you. How about you? Yes, I am really, really well. I am really looking forward to today's topic because mm. you and I know that we love this topic. <laughs> it's one that underpins everything I think we do as business owners and particularly what we do as marketers and content creators. And that is this idea of owning more space. What we mean by that is expanding into a bigger expression of yourself and your business in all the ways, whether that's charging more for your products and services or becoming more visible in your marketing, becoming more audacious in your messaging, offering something new that you know your market needs you to bring to the world, but maybe it feels a little bit intimidating, owning more of your personal space and taking more downtime from your business. It can be owning more space in terms of your positioning and authority in your market. That might mean more speaking engagements or podcast interviews or media exposure or more showing up. It might also be you stepping more fully into your role as CEO in your business and getting further and further out of the weeds and the minutia so that you can have an even bigger impact on your business. Or it can mean growing your email list or expanding the number of strategic alliances you have or paying for advertising so that you can grow your business. All of these things and more are examples of owning more space. They absolutely are. And this is an idea that we discussed at one of our Marketing Success Mastermind two-day in-person meetings. And that was a few months ago that we we really talked about this as a core idea of, of that meeting. And it's really had such a massive impact on um, our masterminders and the results they're getting. It's kind of been a real unleashing in many ways. And it it's something we really wanted to talk about some more here on the show. And really, this idea of owning more space, it's not just a concept. It's, it's about this idea of kind of being a fundamental orientation, the way we're oriented in our lives and in our businesses. And when it comes to the amount of space we own in any of those areas that Susie just mentioned and any other parts of our business in wider life, there's really three kind of fundamental orientations we can have. We can either be maintaining the status quo, so just keeping things the way they are, shrinking back, so actually taking up less space, or expanding and owning more of the space. And we can be doing those things consciously or even unconsciously uh, many times. So, for example, 
when it comes to our pricing, Susie mentioned about owning more space when it comes to the value that we charge. We um, we might be either shrinking back or expanding. Mm-hmm. Or we may just be maintaining the status quo because we might have this conscious or unconscious belief that, hey, this is the way this has always been priced. It's the way everyone in the industry charges, so it's kind of unchangeable. So I'm not going to expand here. I'm not going to own more space around my pricing. I'm just going to live with it. And it can sort of become something that we just unconsciously buy into or believe. Or uh, we might be shrinking back from opening that second store if we have a brick and mortar store that's doing well and we're kind of feeling that pull to open the second <coughs> store, but we're, we're shrinking back from it. The owning more space urge is there, but we keep pulling back from that that urge. Or we might be shrinking back from saying yes to those speaking engagements or being bolder with our messaging for a whole raft of reasons. It could be we don't feel ready or we don't feel good enough or we think, who wants to hear from us? Or maybe we think, this just feels too risky. I'm scared. I don't like stepping outside my comfort zone. (laughs) So these can be the ways that we shrink back. And we can be expanding in all kinds of ways too. And maybe as you're listening to this, you're thinking about Mm. the ways you're shrinking back and expanding. We could be expanding by charging more, jumping in and doing our first webinar, stepping out on stage, getting more organised with our social media presence so we can expand our reach, putting together more effective marketing campaigns so we can lead people step by step through our process in getting more sales and making more money. And all those things can feel equally exciting and terrifying at the same time, you know, (laughs) so we can have this push-pull with this idea of owning more space. And like Michelle said, this can be conscious or unconscious. It could be that we're deliberately shrinking back from something so that we can expand in other areas. This is particularly true when we're moving from being in the weeds, so in the details of our business, to becoming more of the CEO in our business, something we're always encouraging women to do. So when we're wanting to do less on the day-to-day so that we can be more strategic and take on more high-level roles that are going to give us more leverage. So we're not saying that you have to own more space in all the spaces, in all the areas of your life. It's about getting clear what spaces you want to expand into, knowing that there are some spaces where it makes more sense to maintain the status quo right now and other spaces where it's time to shrink back from. But in the main, what we know is true, that is in many business owners, um, sorry, that is the case with many business owners, is that they're playing small and playing it safe when they could be expanding into much more of their potential and having a stronger business as a result of that expansion. And women will often say to me, Susie, I want to play a bigger game. Owning more space is a pathway to that bigger game. That's why we wanted to expand the conversation about this topic here on the show, because we can give you all the tactics, all the strategies, but if at your core you're playing small and you're not finding ways to own more space where it matters most to you and your business, then those strategies, those tactics, they're ultimately not going to be as effective. Because all of those spaces you feel you want to move into or perhaps you daydream about, maybe it's having those top tier clients or hitting a certain financial milestone or getting invited to speak at that prestigious conference, they are all there for you to expand into. Absolutely. I love that idea. They're all already there. Mm. <laughs> you just mm. They're just ready for you to expand into. I love mm. that, Susie. And when you think about it, growing your list, getting more followers, selling more product, having more impact, these are all expansive, taking up more space mm. kinds of orientations. So it's kind of important if we want to get more successful with our marketing, that we need to have that seed of expansion within us. That needs to be our orientation at our core. Otherwise, you get this push-pull thing happening that Susie was referring to. We can be thinking, we want to grow our list. We can be thinking, yeah, I want more followers. Mm. But if we are actually inside, really feeling that we just want to maintain the status quo, hey, let's not rock the boat. Let's not stick our head up and be a tall poppy and get criticised or let's not take too much risk. Or we're actually saying to ourselves subconsciously or otherwise, I want to shrink back from this, I'm, I'm afraid. Then that's actually going to be what happens. No matter how much effort you put in, mm. there will be this element of pulling back. There'll be this sort of you won't get the full effect and, and result of all of these great strategies and tactics and energy that you're putting into it. So stepping into that expansive, owning more space is really what the the marketing orientation 
is all about. It's it's really at the core of what it is to be a content marketer because through your marketing, it, I mean, at its core, at its essence, marketing is about owning more mm. space with your messaging, your audience, your pricing, your brand, your profile, your network, your clients, your financial results, the impact that you're making in the world and so much more. Yeah, that market share, that mind share in the customer's mind. I love this. And when we first presented this concept of owning more space as the theme for our two-day meeting at our mastermind a few months ago, because every time we meet, we have a theme, um, something we think is going to be the most relevant to the most number of people in the mastermind. And Michelle and I are always watching the group and thinking about what they need most right now. So when we presented this idea of owning more space, we started by showing a slide that had a small red circle in the middle of the screen, and it had the word you on it. So she can imagine a small circle in the middle of the screen with the word you in it. And then we showed that circle staying the same size to show maintaining the status quo. And then we showed it getting bigger to show expanding and then getting smaller to show shrinking. And we invited our masterminders to share the different areas in their businesses, in their lives, where they were maintaining, shrinking and expanding. And then we said, but here's the thing, that dot, that small circle, it's actually an illusion. That bar- that um, fence that you've put around yourself, that barrier to being bigger, that circle that contains you, it's an illusion. There really is no boundary. There is no circle. We are limitless beings. We have infinite potential. The expansiveness in any area of your life is already available to you and within you. And when we can have that awareness, then it really is a case of simply owning more of the space that you already have available to you, that you already have within you, that is already there, sitting there in your infinite potential. I go all goosey, Michelle. (laughs) I love it when we talk about this. It's so good. And yeah, I'm going goosey too, right? And that's why we're deliberately also using the phrase owning more space versus taking more space. And again, you know, Susie mentioned we sort of deliberate on the theme for the mastermind. We really do. And we spend a lot of time thinking about what is the essence of what we're saying here. Because the dis- the distinction between owning more space versus taking more space, and that's sometimes a phrase that's used or taking up more space, is the thing. You don't have to take anything. You don't have to snatch anything. You don't have to beg, borrow or steal a single thing. (laughs) Nothing needs to be taken from anyone else so you can be bigger. It's all, as Susie said, already available to you, already within you. Now, we might need awareness Mm. and help and education and support to step more fully into that space that we each have, that that space that we all own, to realise that circle is the illusion, that there is no circle, we're already infinite. But knowing that it's there to step into is such an important distinction. I'm not the circle. I'm beyond the circle. Mm. In fact, when you look back to what the word education means, because a lot of what we do is about helping women through education. A lot of what you're doing here listening to this podcast is about educating yourself and expanding yourself and really seeking to own more space. But if you go back to the etymology of the word education, you go right back to the Latin, it's about leading out from within Mm. an educator who's somebody who's actually helping people tap into what's already within them. It's not about making something incomplete, complete. You're already complete. Each of us is already complete and big and magnificent. Indeed we are. (laughs) I love that. And I love that you gave the the, um, definition of education is that to educe, to pull from within to out. Um, There's people in your industry who are owning more space perhaps than you or there's people in your world that you admire who are owning more space. All they're doing is that they're tapping into the space that's already there for them to occupy. That is the completeness that Michelle's talking about. They're just owning it. They don't have anything more than you do. And this conversation is making me think about the amazing Katie Abbott Uh, in our mastermind, who is going through a massive expansion in her business right now. She said to us that she feels like the space was already there in her business. She just needed to step into it. And there's so much truth into what in what Katie said, because we will often encourage you to dream big. And the fact that you're listening to this show right now tells me that you are committed to your learning. 
you've probably been to lots of courses and read lots of books and listened to lots of talks where you've been encouraged to dream big. And that can lead to some big goals, which we love. I want a seven figure business. I want this many clients. I want that many people in my course. I want to win a big kajillion dollar corporate account. But in order for us to realize those big dreams, we need to be big, right? And you already are big. It's just about consciously finding ways to actually own that space, to be part of the expansion into the space that you want, because it's already there for yours to own. I know this is a big concept, and I really hope that this is resonating with you. Mm. And, you know, Susie, it can, this, this owning more space, it can be different things at different times for different people, you know, and we, we're seeing that in the mastermind right now. Different people are focusing on different parts of their business and their life right. uh, to own more space in. Mm. For some people, it's about owning more downtime. You know, actually carving out space to not be at work. (laughs) For others, it's about owning more space of being seen as a real authority Mm. and thought leader in their in their industry. For others, it's about owning more space about the price they charge. And you know, for example, Susie, a few years back when you were rebranding from the Australian Business Women's Network to her business, you were really focused on expanding your brand and your story, and you also more consciously stepped into the spotlight Mm. and owned that, you know, that was a real moving into the space that we already occupied, but just like really owning it. And that became more of your focus as you became more front and center in your business rather than, you know, the person kind of holding other people up to the front and center. And to do that, other parts of your business needed to maintain the status quo because we don't need to be expanding or owning more space in all the spaces all the time. Right. And in some ways, I don't think we can. Um, Mm. But, you know, that's what we, when you said choosing, which areas do I need to expand into? And so even though anything is possible, and I do believe we've each got so much potential within us, limitless, actually, it's really about choosing what spaces we even want to own more of and when. So yes, the shift to her, to her business was something I'd brewed on for a long time. And then it came to the point where there was undeniably It was what I wanted to focus on owning more space around. The time was right. And it was a big initiative. In fact, we talk more about that in one of our recent episodes, episode 203, um, 12 questions to ask before you rebrand anything. So other things had to be put into maintenance mode while we own more space with our rebrand. For example, during that time, we focused on our branding and on a major evolution and up-leveling of our products and services. That meant new websites, a ton of new email communications, a rollout plan for all the places we needed to change over to the new Her Business branding. So we put a bunch of other things in maintenance mode, just ticking along, maintaining the status quo, things like our newsletter and this podcast and our regular meetings and our systems. We didn't do any major overhauls in other spaces and areas because we had our focus. We knew the space we were focused on owning more of was this rebrand. Since then, however, we've had other focus areas like really building up our paid traffic capabilities, meaning we've been running a lot of paid advertising on social media platforms over the last couple of years and owning more space in that area, becoming more visible. Again, this involved a major up-leveling of skill sets and mindsets around actually investing lots of dollars in traffic and systems around how ads are created and approved and all the different moving parts. And it also took expanding into having someone work with us someone with expertise in this area, which is allowing us to own the more space because we have a partner in expanding more quickly without making all the beginner's mistakes. Because when we bring in the right who's, we can expand without having to do it all ourselves. So you can own more space without having to do it all yourself. But first, it took this orientation that Michelle spoke about. It took us having the intention to own more of that space of showing up in ads across social platforms. The belief in our ability to play a bigger game in that area was also crucial to us owning more space there, to step into the potential we already had within us. I think that's true. I think it's really so true what you're saying. And it, and it can also be so challenging, right? You know, stepping up, playing bigger, investing money, changing our mindsets. 
And I just love how you lead by example with that so often, Susie. I mean, it's not just coming onto this show and saying, here's what you got to do, and then you don't do it. I mean, you're really walking the talk. And it is definitely something we need to practice. And we've got a few ways that you can practice this idea of owning more space uh, coming up. But first, I wanted to speak to the fact that globally, we've just gone through a period of pretty unprecedented isolation, Mm. a period where the world has literally done some pretty heavy duty shrinking back quite literally in our houses, you know, buildings of clothes has been restriction in movement in a lot of ways. And it can be harder to come back out of it because in so many ways that can feel like the new status quo. And we are incredibly adaptable as human Mm -hmm. beings. And so I just wanted to speak to this and I found this myself I think what happened after a couple of years of the world kind of being in a bit of retraction, a bit of like everybody going within, that I had to really deliberately own more space by expanding back out. Mm. And if that's resonating with you right now, maybe that's just something that you can meditate on because we are, as I said, very adaptable. And as things get smaller, we can think, oh, this is the new normal. So this episode's here to also get you thinking about that. Maybe there's been a gradual closing down and shrinking back. You know, maybe you couldn't have your in-person meeting and so you scaled them out. Well, maybe now's the time to get it back on the agenda. And we're here to encourage you to open yourself back up to the possibility of expansion and owning Mm -hmm. more space. And maybe it needs to look different to how it's looked before. And that's a normal, very, very normal part Mm. of owning more space. Mm. Owning more space often means involving into newer, different versions of ourselves and our businesses. And, you know, that's okay. That's really normal, right, Susie? Absolutely. And I love what you're talking about there because it can be really easy to go, well, that was two years of our lives. We're over it now. We're back on track. But really, are we? Are we shrinking our dreams? If our business got sidelined by the pandemic, are we willing to own more space back in the area we were, to dream bigger, to think that we can have more, to think that we can rebuild what we lost or to originate something that's even grander and more amazing for us. That really takes, I think, a conscious um, willingness to own more space, to come out of this period of time. And I know for many of us we're a year out of it, but I can still feel the residue, even in myself, Mm -hmm. of having shrunk and just having the Mm. world feel like it shrunk, shrunk around me, couldn't travel, could only do so many things, limitations, to really then just going, okay, the space is mine to own again. Maybe it was always there. Maybe it was my own limitations. But now I can deliberately choose where I want to own more space. Yeah, and that reset button is available to us at any time, whether it's right after a couple of years of a massive global shutdown or whether it is just that we realise we've sort of wound things Mm. down in our business or in the way we're thinking, or we've got really comfortable, like things are going great, but we're just, you know, doing the same old, same old. And really we're being called to own a bit more space in in a certain way or to challenge ourselves in a certain way. And Susie, you just mentioned a phrase there I want to pick up on because I do think it is a question to think on right now. Uh, As you're listening to this show, just take a moment to think about this question. How willing are you to own more space Hmm. it's just a question feel it in your being are you feeling it like a tightness in the stomach are you feeling it like a constriction in the chest or are you like getting butterflies of excitement and like a big smile on your face and thinking yeah heck yeah I'm like give it to me baby I'm totally ready or is it like a tenseness in the shoulder that's like no I'm resistant Hmm. I don't like this idea I can feel that I've got comfy in my little spot or maybe it's something else but just Right now, become present to your own personal answer to that question. How willing am I to own more space? And it's just something to be aware of because your first job Mm -hmm. when doing a marketing campaign, and let's bring it back to, you know, marketing because that's often what we're talking about, is being prepared to own the space. If you want to get 50 new members from your webinar, for example, then you need to be able to see that happening and own Mm. that that's possible. Not only own that it's possible, but like Katie said, know that that space is already there, that eventuality is already there. You've just got to step into it. Because any fear or doubt or not owning that makes the job just that much harder. 
no matter how good your marketing is or how closely you follow the awesome webinar framework or how great the copy is to promote your webinar or how good the offer was. Mm. So important as marketers. It's a conscious decision, isn't it? Like mm. I'm going to own more space. And we invite you to ask yourself, in addition to what Michelle just asked, is where am I maintaining the status quo? Where am I shrinking? Where am I expanding? And it's just about being aware as, you know, beings of where these things are happening and not having it sort of happen to us. You know, where do I have a growth mindset right now? Where am I holding fear or am I hiding and shrinking back? Because this personal questioning will help you identify those places where you might need to be more expansive. It might help you congratulate yourself for the space that you are owning. It might even show you where you feel ready to expand and grow. Yeah, so good. And we don't often create that space for ourselves to even ask those questions. So right. I love that it's kind of getting meta, isn't it? Own a bit of space so you can ask some questions of yourself so you can own some more space. But that's very much how it does go, you know, valuing these questions and seeing how important it is. And another question to 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 dwell on is what are you prepared to allow? And this is something I've really um, worked on in my life, allowing mm. things to happen. Yeah. And it really can be easy, <laughs> you know. And I think that's that's quite um, that's quite a shift when perhaps we've, like I did, I grew up in a working class family, and you know, I saw I saw my parents working hard for the money, and I, you know, thought, well, I, I, it's going to be hard. I, you know, I have to work really hard. I have to make this hard. But what am I prepared to allow in? to this space, to expand this space that I already mm. have this infinite possibility in. And a great example is someone, Susie and I both know. And adore. And, and adore. <laughs> and, um, you know, she is such a great example of being fiercely owning space and mm. being really, really kind of clean energy about it. And uh, anyway, she couldn't make a client meeting it was there was a, a big meeting she needed to attend in another state, and because of her schedule and what when certain things were finishing, when she looked at the flights and the wait times, she just couldn't couldn't quite make it happen. She was missing out by a few hours. So this client said, "Well, we'll pick you up in a private plane and fly you to the meeting." And you know, there was a real moment where she needed to allow that, allow that expansion of of what's possible. Yes, I could be the kind of person that is so valuable that my clients will fly me around in a private plane so that I can they can get my wisdom, that they can get the benefit of me being at a, a meeting that goes for a few hours. So she was prepared to allow this mm. into her sense of what was normal, what was possible. She could own the space of someone whose clients value her enough. They'll send a private plane to get her. And not only could she allow it, what we watched her do, because we were mm. fairly close to her going through this as she processed this, <laughs> was then she owned it, baby. Mm. She owned it. She was like, yeah, this, of course, this is how it's going to work. And and she she could see, yeah, this makes so much sense because I know the value I'm going to bring at that meeting is 10 times the cost of a plane. And it seems penny pinching to not have me there because mm. um, I can't make the domestic flight. And so she owned it in herself. She owned it on social media. She took images of herself and she also owned it in expanding her sense of her own value and so much more came from that. It was so good. It was such a wonderful experience to watch because I think it elevated all of us to look yes. at, you know, what is it that you allow? What is it that I'm willing to have? I can say that I want to own more space, but am I willing to have the space that's there or yeah. the riches or the fame or the results or the number of clients or the bank balance? Because those two go hand in hand. We can ask, but then we, what will we allow? What will we allow that doesn't come with friction or hard work, as Michelle said, someone else, you know, I'm also someone who's grown up with a family that just worked their tails off. Things never came easy. And so being willing to allow for things to come into our lives, knowing that we've done the work, you know, and she's an authority in her industry, she's mm. very well respected, oh, yeah. she's, you know, she's done the work. But now she can also just allow for this magic to happen where she's valued beyond how she even 
thought was possible. But she's so willing, as Michelle said, to own it. She's like, yeah, of course you're going to send a private jet. I'm that good. (laughs) 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 Because amazing things can happen. And we can then sabotage them because we don't feel like we can have them. We don't feel big enough or deserving of them. So this continuous work of owning more space is the work of being a business owner. It is the work of playing a bigger game. If you want your business to grow, you have to grow personally. Right? This is something we say all the time inside of her business is that every, I know for me and probably for Michelle as well, every major shift I've had in my life, in my business has started with a major shift in myself and for things to change, mm-hmm. usually first I need to change something about how I'm thinking or what I'm doing. So inside of her business, we have these eight growth zones. And these are eight areas of business that every successful business has working for them. And we work on each of these growth zones every single month inside of our network. Now, one of these growth zones, and I keep saying it's my (laughs) favourite, is the growth zone called you, right? So other growth zones are things like marketing and sales and products and technology and people, all the practical things that you need to run a successful business. But the you growth zone, that is about your success in business is as much about who you're being as what you're doing. Okay, I want you to hear that again. Your success in business is as much about who you're being as it is about what you're doing. When you are owning more space, you are being bigger. You are allowing more in. You are staking your claim in the space that is already yours that you may not have claimed yet. So we mentioned a couple of practical things that you can do to practice owning more space. And I'm going to go over those again quickly for you. The first is to pick something to practice on. So what is at least one area that you'd love to own more space in over the next 90 days? Take a moment and think about it and just jot that down. I know that you might be on the road right now, but just take a moment to revisit this podcast and do this exercise. So what is at least one area that you'd like to own more space in over the next 90 days? Right? Jot that down. Get really clear about what it is. Maybe it's growing your email list. Maybe it's getting that new multi-thousand dollar client. Then think about a specific target for that. So you want to be specific. So if it's, I want to grow my email list, then by how many people and by when? So maybe you want to add 500 people to your email list by 21 May. Now tune into what is happening when you make that claim, when you set that goal. Does it feel scary or challenging in terms of the space that you might need to own to have it? Because it's really hard to create these results if you're going to stay invisible. You have to own these spaces. Maybe you think, oh, I don't want to be pushy or needy or you're worried about the budget that you might need to allocate to acquire those new leads. Just tune into all the things that might want you to instead just keep the status quo or get derailed. Now, imagine that you already have it. Imagine that you're able to own having these additional 500 people on your email list in a way that was fun and felt in flow. How might that feel? What good things could come from that? Now, again, if you're on the road listening to this podcast, come on back and do this exercise because it's really, really powerful. So imagine you already have it and you're able to own having it in a way that was fun and felt in flow. Because we said earlier, we don't need to have to work hard for everything. We want to allow it and we want to own the space. Now realize you already have what it takes to get that outcome. You already own that space. It's just a matter of stepping into it and then commit to it. See it enlarging and expanding and enveloping you and your business. And also acknowledge that there may be times along the way when your concerns or fears will crop up. That is normal. It's not always easy. It's not always roses. But you already possess that thing that you want. You just have to find a way to step into it. We're being a little woo-woo today, which I know we like to be. And I encourage you, circle back, do this exercise, get into the feeling of, get into the space of owning the thing that you want to have more of and really, really connect to that. Mm. Because it's like you said, it's it's as much about or even more so the whole ball game really in business is about who you're being. Right. We think it's about what we're doing, but that is is such a small part of it, really. And so, yeah, we're getting wooed today, and it's really deliberate. We can't believe this about 
who we're being and not share with you some of this because these are the strategies that are for success. It's not just about what you put on your sales page. It's not just about how you write a good testimonial, you know, how you're showing up, how you're thinking about what you say yes to, what you allow is so fundamental to everything you're doing. So, uh, yeah, I, I just want to say embrace the woo and um, get that first step, pick something to practice on, hmm. really feel it in your body, what it's like, you know, what what <coughs> buttons it might be pushing and also imagine what it's like when it's already done, when you already have it and feel that excitement and feel that flow and how you might get there having fun hmm. and know that you already have that it's already there you just got to step into it so that's step one in this process that we're sharing because we know we're getting woo but we still got a couple we could still got a three-step process you know us <laughs> that's right <laughs> the second step is once you've done that piece of work that internal piece of work tell someone else what your practice experiment is it mm. might be a trusted colleague it could be your goals group if you're in the her business network it could be your masterminders if you're in the mastermind. It could be your business partner, a family member, a close friend. Declaring it to somebody else is mm. also extremely powerful. It just makes it even more real. Yeah, you know what? In the next 90 days, I'm going to do this experiment. I'm going to own more space mm. around my email list. I'm going for gold. I'm going to get 500 people on my email list by the 21st of May and I'm going to do it by owning more space. And I'm going to do it in a way that feels fun and that is in my full potential and flow. And I already have this outcome. I've just got to find the way to step into it. I love that. And that declaring it to someone, that colleague, that goals group, those trusted peers, we've seen that work inside of the mastermind because when we covered this topic a few months back and women in the mastermind started to declare where they were going to step into owning more space, and this is a theme that's continued on, what happened was their peers rallied around them, opening doors for them, showing them opportunities, cheering them on, you know, keeping them accountable. So, so powerful, that point that Michelle just made. And finally, and Michelle used these words, finding your flow. How can you shift from forcing or efforting, as one of my mentors says, efforting to allowing the orientation that you already own this space and it's just about getting out of the way and letting it happen, about feeling the discomfort and being comfortable with that, that it takes that, you know, it's going to take some change in you to start to own more of the space that is there and available for you that you just haven't stepped into yet and that you might just dip your toe in the water to start with, but you'll get more and more comfortable. You'll find that flow. When you can do that, when you can find that flow and shift from forcing to actually allowing, this is when business can be fun and exciting and expansive. And who doesn't want more of that, Susie? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a great way to practice this little framework that we've just shared with you, which is to pick something to practice on, get really clear about what it is, feel all the, you know, the bits that might be coming up for you around the discomfort or any stress or fear or whatever you might feel around it, then see it really happening in reality and then tell somebody else that you're going to do it and then really commit to finding your flow, commit to doing it in a way that is about owning more space, not forcing, not having to take because you lack, but just knowing that you already have everything and then it's just stepping into it. And this is such a good thing to practice. You might get part of this right and you go, right, well, I've kind of figured out a few things. Let me pick my next 90 days or let me pick my next thing and practice it again because it's not just a one and done. Mm. Owning more space isn't just like a declaration. I am now from yes. henceforth going to <laughs> own more space. <laughs> it really is about consciously choosing and re-choosing and practicing this orientation that I'm a limitless being and that I've already got everything I need. I just need to step into the space that I already own, this boundless potential, this boundless opportunity that's around me. And it is something that you just keep choosing day in and day out. It's about really the person behind the marketer. Mm. You know, we often are talking to the marketer on this show, but there's a person behind the marketer and that person is determining the results the marketer gets. Hmm. 
Absolutely. So, because we can give yeah. you all the st- tactics, all the strategies, all the checklists, all those things. And it also takes that person behind the marketer, the person who's actually listening to this show, to step up into being the person who can have the successful business, who can have the large email list, who can have those top tier clients, who can have all those things. And we, Michelle and I, we want you to have it all, whatever your heart desires, the business and life that you love, the lifestyle that you're working so hard to achieve. And so we want to grant you (laughs) the encouragement to really own more space. Now, I hope you found the practical tips and insights shared really helpful for you to expand into a bigger expression of yourself. Remember, by owning more space, you can charge more for your products or services. You can become more visible in your market. You can reach more people and you can really step into fully expressing who you are. Now, I know that's not easy. So look around. Who is doing this that you could model, that you could be with? Someone I see owning more space in our wonderful Her Business Network is Karina Pelliconi, who's the owner of Plum Petal. Now, I have seen her own more space in her industry as an online retailer. She's gone from having 40 products in her store to hundreds of products. She now has a team of people. She has wholesalers selling for her. So she's showing up, she's speaking up, and she's owning more space. And Karina's um, store, I want you to check it out at plumpetal.com.au. She sells beautiful statement jewelry to curvy women. Now, the reason I mentioned uh, Karina is because she's an example of a member who's really owning more space, but also because she has been so gorgeous and left this review on Apple Podcasts. She said, authentic, inspiring, and worth investing your time to listen. And she's given us five stars. She said, this is the place I go to gain my inspiration, spark new ideas, and face my challenges. Susie is such a wealth of knowledge covering the most essential components of contemporary business and continues to introduce amazing guests, both from within the network and so many professional experts. I've learned extensively for being a part of this network and continue to enjoy this podcast. Well, Karina, I love that you are out there listening and I love stepping you, seeing you stepping into owning more of your space. Now, as women business owners, we can often hold unconscious beliefs that cause us to shrink back from opportunities, right? And today we talked a little bit about that. But shifting to this orientation of expansion, of owning more space It really helps you grow your business. And I get it. Sometimes we want to revert to being small. That's why being connected to a community of other women who also want to own more space is so precious. And I'm so excited to see what happens when you and all our Her Business Network members start to embody this idea more and more. There is going to be no stopping you. And I cannot wait to hear your stories. That is so exciting for me. I want to thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to the podcast to get more practical tips and insights on how to grow and thrive as a woman business owner. And if you know someone who would really like the show, please share it with them. I will catch you in the next episode. I love doing this show for you. And you know what I really love? I love it when I get a comment from you on what you enjoyed and what you implemented. It really makes my day. So if there's something from today's episode that really resonated with you, then let me know. You can email me at podcast at herbusiness.com. The show notes for today's episode, you can find over at herbusiness.com forward slash 215. And remember to check out the Content Sales Podcast. You will find it wherever you like to listen. If you enjoyed this episode, please head on over to Apple Podcasts and give us a rating or review. I would so appreciate it. And join me next time right here on the Her Business Podcast. Bye for now.